We'll tell you something about some peculiar uh, kind of ritual practice related to houses in our Turp region. But I will start with a small introduction to Turp archaeology since I think you may not all be familiar with it. A Turp is an artificial dwelling mound in uh, a salt marsh area and it's meant to protect houses and people and their animals against high tides. And that is necessary in such an area, in the salt marsh area, because uh, high tides occur several times a month. In the Northern Netherlands, we know of over 2,000 turps dating from uh, the start of uh, in uh, habitation of this area around 600 BC. And turps were founded until the 11th or 12th century when the first dikes were made in this area. Uh, before embankment, so before these first dikes were made, all settlements in this area were uh, turb settlements. The turb region is uh, uh, found in the northern Netherlands. Uh, of course, you also have turbs in neighboring Germany. But I will now zoom into only one turb, the turb of Ezingen. It's found in our province of Groningen, and the arrow indicates <coughs> the location of Ezingen. It's about 12 kilometers northwest of the city of Groningen. All the black dots on the map are turbs. Ezingen, uh, as many other turbs in the northern Netherlands, was commercially quarried uh, in the early 20th century for the fertile soil. The soil was transported to poor soils inland. Ar archaeological excavations were carried out between 1923 and 1934. And the trenches are indicated in blue on this aerial photograph. And all the green parts are leveled, were leveled then. Excavation leader was our famous professor Van Giffen. Uh, the original size of the turp was 16 hectares, indicated by the yellow line. The uh, present village is on the still remaining part of the turp. And about only 10% of this turp was excavated. In the center, of the turf, where it's about five meters high, there were 22 levels excavated. Ezinger has become quite famous because of the remains of as many as 85 longhouses with built in bias from the pre Roman and Roman Iron Age. <laughs> And you can see on this photograph that preservation was excellent, uh, especially of organic remains, also of organic remains, especially in the lower layers uh, with pre-Roman Iron Age houses. These houses became the prototype of the Northwestern European continental farmhouse for a long time. These, the results of these uh, excavations were not published. In 2011, we uh, got a chance to start uh, analyzing and publishing the results of these excavations. And my focus has been on, uh, besides pottery and other material remains, on the remains of rituals. And many of these remains of rituals, ritual deposits, are associated associated with houses and with households. Uh, ritual deposits are found in house platforms and you can see on the schematic overview of a developing turb that platforms were uh, still made also in higher layers so each house was built on its, in, on its own little platform made of salt marsh uh, saws. Uh, so, 
in these housing platforms you can find deposits, you can also find them related to the building phase, to the abandoning phase, and there's a special use of human remains. I will show you some examples. Uh, this is uh, what the excavator called the building sacrifice. Well, it's found near the wall, the lower part of the wall of the oldest excavated house dating from the 5th century BC. It's a partial horse, cattle and sheep that were placed against uh, this wall within the outer post and then covered with salt. From, the, uh, from abandoning, we have several deposits uh, found in houses uh, consisting of piles of wooden parts. These are parts of disc wheels and of construction timbers, carefully placed, as you can see. This is one example from a 4th century BC house. They found several houses from the pre-Roman Iron Age. Well, there are other kinds of abandoning deposits too, but uh, I will now focus on the use of human remains in these houses. First, you need to know something about burial practice in this area. We have no uh, cemetery, cemeteries from uh, this area in, the, in this period. In this area, only from about uh, 400 AD, we find mixed cemeteries with cremations as well as inhumations. In many terms, uh, one or several single inhumations are found. We have quite a lot of single bones, and we have a handful of cremations, but these are extremely rare and uh, not always entirely certain. But what I think is that rather than inhumation or cremation, excavation was probably the most common way of dealing with the dead. And I think that uh, this was, uh, that the dogs came in and were uh, doing the actual excavation. After this process was complete, uh, the remaining bones, mostly skulls but also other bones, were collected and kept in family collections. An inventory of human remains in Eisinger includes 11 inhumations in and close to houses, and the oldest one in the salt marsh, somewhat further from a house. 11 single bones, also in and near houses. And some of these single bones are worked. I will show you some examples. And these worked bones all date from the first century BC and AD. Some examples of how this looks like and about the information that we are dealing with. These are, um, this is a part of an excavation drawing and, and a neat drawing. Um, you can see in the green circles on the left, these house plans, uh, the stall boxes are indicated. These are uh, divided by wicker work. There are three fine numbers uh, that uh, uh, for which human remains are recorded. In two cases, these are skull fragments, and in one case, human bones are recorded. And in the house on the right, slightly later from the late pre Roman Iron Age, a skeleton was found buried in the house platform, and it was <coughs> indicated by this uh, small drawing. Then in the first century AD, uh, a part of a plan from uh, this uh, phase of the excavation. You, on the left you can see several overlapping uh, house phases. Though they were built over and over on about the same uh, spot. A deposit from the first century AD uh, near one of the phases of the uh, first century AD, and we can date that on the basis of pottery that's uh, quite well dated. 
this deposit deposit consists of two uh, broken and burnt pots. They are reconstructed, two burnt loom weights, and an unburnt uh, worked part of a human skull that probably was uh, used as an amulet, very small, like this size. And in this same complex of houses, another deposit was found slightly later in a half, uh, but these finds were not burned, broken pot again, and this object is an upper arm bone worked into uh, a kind of handle. And we have several skull cups, as you can see, also from the same period, period found near houses. The location is interesting. Uh, when the population and the settlement increased, these human remains come closer to the houses, especially when a radial settlement structure emerged in the late pre-Roman Iron Age. So a uh, radial <coughs> structure is a very fair way of dividing the available land among the households. Then everyone gets uh, an equal size of the pie, so to speak. How do I interpret these human bones uh, in and near houses? I think that human remains uh, play the role in establishing and maintaining family identity that goes for animations as well as for single bones. I think they were inalienable uh, objects as they were defined by uh, Annette Weiner. I think these objects were uh, deposited as part of family rituals in the near houses. And these work bones, I think, have the same meaning, but uh, by working them, they acquired an extra emphasis and this correlates with the population peak in the first century BC and uh, AD. So I think these human remains were used to create ancestral grounds or ancestral houses. They were uh, meant to create a home, a sense of belonging, I think. Now, after the first century, the population and settlement uh, diminishes and what happens is that also this use of human remains slightly changes. There are fewer human remains and there are more small offerings within houses. Uh, the example shows a partial excavated house from the second century AD and in this house all these small pots and spindle whorls and loom weight and a large pot we found probably offerings made within this house during living in this house. And the reason uh, is, I think, because of a Roman influence, there was uh, some kind of social change, probably uh, a slightly higher level of social stratification. And what happens is that first, the use of single bones uh, uh, disappears. Then you get, in the 3rd century AD, small cemeteries near houses, so they still belong to a household. And then later, that's already in the 5th century, you get mixed cemeteries that belong to settlements rather than to separate households. So if you think you want, may, know, uh, may want to know more about this, you can uh, quickly read this book that I wrote about aging and other ritual practices in the Turb region. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>